To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon and download our app OneFin to start learning on the go. Now sometimes, think about it, there is a non-resident, let us say some company and that company is providing certain goods to people in India, to a resident and let us say the value of this transaction is 5 lakhs and this is the only activity that this company did during the entire year. Now tell me one thing, it has provided some goods or it has provided some services, correct. Now will you treat this income also as income deemed to accrue or arise in India? Now understand. Finance Act 2020 has brought in the concept of significant economic presence. I am going to repeat these words, significant economic presence. And what they have done is they said they will prescribe a threshold. They will prescribe a threshold and if the transaction value exceeds this threshold, then this will be treated as a significant economic presence and thereby this transaction will become a business connection, the so called facility, facilitation will become a business connection and therefore the income arising thereof out of such a transaction will be treated as income accruing or arising in India. So it is very important for us to know what is this threshold. I hope you understood why this threshold is very important for us to know why only if the value crosses the threshold that means it is a significant economic presence only if it is a significant economic presence it is a business connection in India and only if it is a business connection in India the income arising or accruing thereof will be treated as income accruing or arising in India. So let us understand what is the significant economic presence what are these thresholds and have they defined it based on transaction value? No, 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 not really. They have done something very important. Let us read explanation 2a which was inserted in Finance Act 2020. He says, for the removal of doubts it is hereby declared that the significant economic presence of a non-resident in India shall constitute business connection in India and significant economic presence for this purpose shall mean. So, two things are clarified here. One, that if there is significant economic presence, then it is a business connection. Two, what is significant economic presence? He is saying shall mean A, transaction in respect of any goods, services or property. Three important words that you must remember. Goods, services or property carried on by a non-resident with any person in India with any person in India including provision of download of data or software in India if the aggregate of the payments arising from such transaction or transactions during the previous year exceeds such amount as may be prescribed. Of course, this amount that has been prescribed for the time being is 2 crore. So, what is the threshold that they have put in respect of goods, services and property? 2 crore. If the payments exceeds 2 crore or B, he says systematic and continuous soliciting of business activities or engaging in interaction with such number of users in India as may be prescribed. He says if you are interacting with more than certain number of users then it will be treated as a significant economic presence and what is the threshold limit they have put here remember for presently the threshold limit is 3 lakhs at least 3 lakh users 3 lakh users so remember these uh, two figures one is 2 crore in payments or I am using the words or not and or at least 3 lakh users. I am understanding. So, if it crosses this threshold, then what happens? It will be treated as a significant economic presence. And if it is a significant economic presence, it is a business connection in India. 
and obviously if it is a business connection in India, the income arising thereof will be deemed to accrue or arise in India. Having said that, let's continue to read. He says, provided that the transactions or activities shall constitute significant economic presence in India, whether or not, whether or not, whenever the words whether or not are used, it means do not give any weightage to the following three points. What are the three points? Number one, agreement for such a transaction or activities is entered in India. Whether it is entered in India or whether it is entered outside India, don't care. The non-resident has a residence or place of business in India. Whether or not he has a residence or place of business in India, don't care. Or the non-resident renders services in India. We don't care whether the services are rendered in India or outside India. All we have to check is the threshold limit. Notwithstanding any attribution or importance to these three points. And what does he say further? He says, provided further that only so much of the income as is attributable to the transactions or activities referred to in clause A or clause B shall be deemed to accrue or arise in India. These wordings are very similar to what we have learnt earlier in explanation 1. If you remember, in explanation 1 I said, where there are operations for a business around and there are some operations within India, then what will you do? You will take only that which is reasonably attributable, correct? Now tell me, if there is significant economic presence, achha, now there is a mismatch. In explanation 1, we use the words, those incomes which are reasonably attributable to operations in India, you will treat it as if it is deemed to accrue or arise in India. And now, I am telling you in explanation 2a, that that income which is mentioned in clause A and clause B, if there is significant economic presence, will be treated as deemed to accrue or arise in India, whether or not such operations are in India. Don't worry, this 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 has also been clarified. I'll tell you how it has been clarified. In the explanation we read earlier, I read it without the amendment which was made because of introduction of explanation 2a. I am going to read the explanation 1 again and you will notice how beautiful the law is made. In explanation 1, as it stands after introduction of explanation 2a, he says, in the case of business, and listen to me very carefully here, in the case of business, other than the business having business connection in India on account of his significant economic presence, Oh, what does he say? In case of business, other than a business having business connection on account of significant economic presence, of which all the operations are not carried out in India, the income of the business deemed under this clause to accrue or arise in India shall be only such part of the income as is reasonably attributable to the operations in India. Wow. So, now let me kind of clarify and put it in your head clearly explanation 1 explanation 2a explanation 1 may what we learned if there is any business which is having operations in india as well as outside india then that income which is attributable to the operations in india shall only be treated as income deemed to accrue or arise in india and how do you find out whatever you think is reasonably attributable to the operations in india you will find out through some reasonable means and you will include it. And in explanation 2a, what did we learn? If it is a business connection on account of significant economic presence, what is significant economic presence? Threshold. Remember, whenever I use these words, significant economic presence, what will come to your mind is only a threshold. If it is because of significant economic presence and we learn two thresholds, one for goods, services and property, two crore rupees, two for the interaction with users, at least 3 lakh users. Then, whatever is the income attributable to A and B will be income deemed to accrue or arise in India. Remember, here you will not check whether or not the operations are carried out in India. You will not check whether or not the agreement is entered in India. You will not check whether the service is provided in India. At the same time, 
In explanation 1, you will not check what? Whether it is uh, on account of A and B. In explanation 1, we are only talking about those circumstances where it is other than significant economic presence. Correct? In explanation 2a, we are exceptionally focusing on significant economic presence. Are we crystal clear with this?